Let's take a look at the Jacinius lexicon for the word Mashiach. Jacinius was a German scholar of Hebrew. I forget what, what era he was from. I think it's about 200 years ago. Mashiach, masculine gender. Anointed, Christos, used of a shield. Mashiach Nagid, the anointed prince. The anointed priest, the high priest. Anointed prince, more fully, Mashiach Hashem, the anointed of Jehovah. A title of honor given to the kings of Israel as being consecrated to God by anointing and therefore holy. Once used of Cyrus, king of Persia, in Isaiah 45 verse 1. Never of the future Messiah. Now there's a Christian editor, and everything that the Christian editor adds to Jacinius' lexicon is always in square brackets. And he's going to contradict Jacinius and say, well, this is an awfully false statement. Many of these passages refer to Jesus Christ only. Um, so, okay, so that's what Jacinius says that the word Mashiach means. It's someone who is anointed. And I believe that most educated Christians know that. And definitely the majority of Messianic Jews do know that. And the Jewish people for sure know it. That the word Mashiach does not imply Savior by any means. The word Mashiach is anointed. So, if the Bible doesn't use the word the Messiah, where in the world did the Jewish people or the 12 tribes or whatever get this idea of this person or Savior who would come and, and do whatever he's supposed to do? Where, where did it come from? And let's find out. That's why I call this set lecture Messianic Hope. I want everyone to turn to Isaiah chapter 2. Everyone got a Bible? No. Uh, it's, you're going to need a prophet with it. I don't think that has... Oh, no, you're right. Actually, you're right. Uh, we have uh, Isaiah. Isaiah 2 is in the New Testament. Right? Do we have some Bibles? Here at Orton. Chapter 2 is. Yeah, yeah. The newest version. Oh, here we go. We've got a few Tanakhs. I've got three Tanakhs. Yeah, Isaiah. We'll need Isaiah mainly. So. Good, good. So, yeah. Isaiah chapter 2. Let's turn on the lights. Okay. I have to remove it here. Here's another long. Who needs a Bible? <laughs> Come on, anyone need a Bible? Y'all okay? Yeah, we can share. Y'all can share? Yeah. Y'all got a Bible? Mm. Oh, here you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Isaiah chapter 2. Okay. The Word. Isaiah what? Sorry. Chapter 2. The word which Isaiah, the son of Amoz, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. And it will be in the end of days. Established will be the mountain of the house of the Lord at the top of all mountains and exalted above all hills. And all the nations will flow unto it. And many people will go and say, Come, let's go up to the mountain of the Lord, unto the house of the God of Jacob. And He will teach us from His ways, and we will walk in His paths. For from Zion the Torah shall go out, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And He will judge between the nations, and reprove many peoples. And they shall beat their swords into plows, and their spears into nails. No nation shall lift up sword upon another nation, neither will they learn the art of warfare any longer. O house of Jacob, come let us walk in the light of the Lord. How many times does the word Messiah show up in this passage? Zero. Okay. So, is this passage talking about the Messiah? 
or whoever this is it talking about a person no what is it mainly talking about an era okay let's go verse by verse let's try to find some elements of this era that's going to be okay so Isaiah he's speaking he's the son of Amot by the way little fact whenever it says in the Tanakh Isaiah, the son of Amot. Anytime a prophet is uh, introduced in the Bible as the son of somebody, it means that his father was a prophet too. This is, uh, this is what rabbis teach us. That's why everybody knows who Amot is. Huh? That's why everyone knows who Amot is. Who what? Who his father is. Right, every, yes. That's why they know who he is. But there are some prophets where they're not introduced with their father's name. That means they're a, they're a, they're an entry level prophet. <laughs> Who's you know like you know you always talk about like you know there's rabbis right they're good you know but then there are rabbis the son of rabbis you know they're like you know have like extra edge to them because they've grown up with the rabbi all their life their dad uh, and so and so there's prophets and then there's prophets the son of prophets Isaiah was probably the greatest prophet in the prophets in the Bible, in my opinion. He's, he, he spoke with such justice and such fervor and such uh, passion in his words. And he wanted social justice for his people. So the word which Isaiah, the son of Amot, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. This is a vision of Judah and Jerusalem. And it will be in the end of days. Oh, so we have something here talking about an era which will be in the end of days. Be'acharit ha'yamim. Okay? Established will be the mountain of the house of the Lord at the top of all mountains and exalted above, hill, above all hills. What is the mountain of the Lord? What, what is the mountain of the Lord? Not Mount Sinai. Mount Sinai was the mountain in which the Torah was given. Mount Zion, Mount Moriah. Mount Moriah is the, the correct one. So, so we have something. What's on Mount Moriah? Right now? Yes? Uh, later. I, I forgot what's in it. Okay. So what's on top of Mount Moriah <coughs> when Isaiah was speaking? Oh, oh, oh. This building, it's kind of beautiful. It's it's kind of the temple, okay. So, oh, I didn't hear that. You oh, speak uh, louder. Okay, sorry. My There's no temple on Mount Moriah. Not anymore, no, but okay. <laughs> but in Isaiah's day, there was a temple there. So when it says the mountain of the Lord will be high and lifted up, is he really talking about the mountain? Or is he talking about what's on the mountain? What do you think? Uh, now, I'm interpolating here. It says the mountain of the Lord. Did you know geographically <laughs> Mount Moriah is actually lower than yeah. most of the hills Basically. in really? Jerusalem? Yeah. Yeah. The Mount of Olives is like twice the height yeah. of, of Mount Zion is higher than Mount Moriah. Mm. So like you have all these mountains in Jerusalem. You can see this for yourself. And the one which the temple was built. And think about before Herod built the platform for the temple stand. It was even lower. So it's like the, the, the temple was built on one of the lowest mountains in Jerusalem. So Isaiah says, in the end of days, the mountain of the Lord shall be lifted up above all mountains. Well, how is that possible? Physically, it's, it's, it's shorter. It's, it's, it's lower in elevation than all the mountains in Jerusalem. So it must be talking about something spiritual here, not something physical. Not like the mountain's going to be like Mount the Himalayas or something like that. And, you know, in, in Kathmandu or anything like that. It's going to be the highest mountain. That's time spiritually high. Okay? So I'm going to write here the first element we see here in the, uh, this end of days. Let's write end of days here. There's going to be the, the mountain of the Lord. I'll just say the temple will be uh, elevated. Okay? Uh, pathetic quotes. Alright? Alright, the next verse. Someone read the next verse. Not all at once. Verse 3. 
verse, end of verse 2. Nations shall flow to what? To the mountain. To the mountain, right. Okay. And continue. Okay. And many people shall go and say, Come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths, for from Zion shall go forth the Torah and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Okay. Okay. All right. So we have a second element of this end of days. We have Gentiles uh, flocking to, the, to Gentiles to Jerusalem. Okay. The seven, yeah, the, everyone who's not Jewish. Okay. All right. Continue. From 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 Zion, the Torah will go out, and the word of the Lord. From Jerusalem. Okay. What, what we may call this next point? Torah observance. Okay, right. right? In the Messianic age, there's going to be Torah observance. By everyone. Yes, by everybody. And he will judge between nations and reprove many people. And he will judge between the nations and reprove many peoples. So just justice. Universal justice. Next element. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. No nation shall lift a sword up against nation, and nor will they learn the art of warfare. So we'll call that peace. universal peace. No war. No Palestinian-Israeli conflict. The world's full of gardeners. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. They're going to see these weapons. They're like, what are we going to do with them? Yeah. Well, we got to have some use for them. We'll just turn them into plowshares and stuff. All right. So Isaiah chapter 2, he's bringing forth what's going to happen in the end of days.